All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today in our lab, we actually have an X79 motherboard. This is uh, you know kind of a step back. You see a lot of people with their Z77 products, and we do have a couple of more of those to get up for you. But today we're going to take a look at the Rampage 4 Gene. This is ASUS's uh, Micro ATX board that runs the X79 chip. It's sort of their you know a lot of power in a small package type of product. It's also what they call their gateway product into the Republic of Gamers line. This is the lower end of their higher end. So it's got your enthusiast level products in a smaller package. It's not going to have everything that you are looking for, like let's say in the formula or in the extreme, but it's going to have a considerable amount of that and it's going to get you into that upper level echelon of performance versus price and you're going to get quite a bit out of it. All right, looking at the front of the box, you see it's got the typical uh, Republic of Gamers logos, you know, all of your marketing information, your different badges down here at the bottom. And of course it is PCIe uh, Generation 3 ready. All right, when we open up the front flap, you can see that there's more information under here. They talk about some of the extra features, your MEM Tweak It, your ROG Connect, your bundled software. Damon Tools Pro Standard is actually bundled. You have Kaspersky. There's a Republic of Gamers CPU Z function that's in here, which is pretty nice. Uh, the only problem we ever ran into that was uh, some difficulties in making sure that it was up to date. And then on the upper level, you have your Supreme FX3 sound that's up here, as well as your Extreme Digi Plus 2 engine. This is going to be your power management. You know, ASUS has some great power management features on their board, so this is definitely going to cover, cover you for that. Flipping it around to the back, again, it looks a lot like the rest of the Republic of Gamers boards. You have your highlights of what the features ASUS is actually want to, is trying to push with this board, as well as a basic specs list and some other information here. So you do have pretty much everything that you want to know if you're looking at the outside of this board in order to pick it up. Um, of course, you know you do have one of ASUS or yeah, one of ASUS's big pushes is going to be the Intel Ethernet, and that's high, uh, featured prominently on the back here. So we're going to go ahead and get the box opened up and show you what's actually inside of it. All right, on top, the first thing you're going to notice is the actual board itself. We're going to take this out and set it aside, as we'll talk to you about that a little bit later. Right inside the box, we've seen this one before. You actually have a Do Not Disturb sign. You know, if you want to throw that on your door, that's great. This is your USB cable for your ROG Connect. It's going to be uh, male on both ends. You have their SATA 2 and SATA 3 cables. The ones with the white ends are a little bit higher quality cables. The ones with the black end are what they consider their SATA 2 cables. So we have those. You have an SLI bridge that's built in. You know, it comes with the box. You also have your Q connectors. These are nice. I actually like this one for the front panel. It's great so that you can set this up outside of the board, uh, outside of a case, and then just go ahead and drop it in once you're ready. You also have your I.O. shield with the nice padding on the back makes it easier to put into a case. You now have a complete book on the ROG Connect. This is great. It's going to explain to you what you need, how to work it, what, and all the features that you get with it. And ROG Connect is actually a nice product. We've worked with it a couple of times and shown you that before. And we'll definitely uh, cover that in depth with this board. And you have your manual. Um, as with a lot of manuals, you end up with a, an errata page. And of course stickers so that you can label everything for a quick and easy reconfiguration if you need it along with your drivers and software DVD. At the bottom of the box, ASUS has provided you with their ROG Sunburst logo. So this is a pretty nice sticker. We actually have quite a few of these uh, with some of the ROG boards that have run through the, uh, run through the lab here. Alright, so that covers all of the accessories that come in the box. Now we're going to actually show you the motherboard itself and talk to you a little bit about the features, the design, and some of the components that are in there. Alright, so we've got the motherboard out and as you can see it is a micro ATX form factor and the biggest feature of this board is going to be that 2011 socket. That thing is just huge. It's for a larger processor. You've got a lot of pins you have to accommodate and the fact that ASUS has managed to squeeze that in here along with a full set of the uh, quad channel memory dims, dim slots you know that's pretty impressive so they've done a lot of trace tuning and trace refinement to make sure that this board is going to be able to pack all of this in and it's going to be operate for you on a functional level uh, you know you can try and slam as much as you want into a motherboard but eventually you're going to start having traces that are going to cross talk and you're going to have differences in performance between your, your components that are going to create some issues one of the things we've always liked about ASUS is that they do take that extra time to sort of tune the traces on the board before the components go in so that they don't have to try and fix performance on the back end or fix it with a BIOS flash or change to a BIOS setting in there so that it improves performance or improves stability. You see a lot of that where a board will be released and then you'll have five or six BIOSes that come out in pretty rapid succession to fix one problem or another or even correct problems that were, that were created by the last fix, uh, sort of like a Microsoft syndrome. Alright, again, taking a look at it, 
You can see that you have a nice layout here. They do use all solid capacitors on this. Um, you have your 24 pin power port. You have a 4 pin power uh, PWM fan header that's right here. It's kind of close to this 24 pin uh, power ATX power slot. So we're not exactly sure how usable that's going to be in practice once you get it inside of a case. It may be good for a case fan or something like that. You also have a uh, your CPU. This is a CPU optional port, so if you're running a dual fan uh, style cooler, you do have that there. And then the CPU fan is up here right next to the, uh, to the LEDs. And if you saw that, this is the option one here. It might have been out of frame a second ago. Of course, you have a nice layout here for your uh, power, the, the power controls for your RAM modules on this side. So even though everything looks pretty compressed in there, it still is a very clean layout and a very clean design. I'm looking a little bit down here below the uh, ATX power header. You have a USB 3.0 power header that's going to be for front panel accessories and all of that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the upper side of the board here. Your 8-pin auxiliary power connector is going to be right here. They do have 4 pins blocked off, which we find interesting in an enthusiast level board. Uh, we don't see anybody running this that doesn't have an ATX power supply that wouldn't have an 8-pin auxiliary header. So the use of this uh, cover here is kind of uh, interesting and in our opinion it's not needed. So it's sort of a redundant thing to put in there. Alright, you can see again we have all of our solid caps up here and along here. ASUS also has a pretty good cooling unit. This is actually very thick. And if you take a look at it, you can see that they've got some nice surface area here, even though these cooling fins are not spiked and they're not high. You know, your chances of uh, removing some knuckle skin here is going to be considerably less than on some of those that decide to make it, you know, nice and spiky with sharp angles. And then of course that cooling continues over to the other side for the rest of your power management. You have your CPU voltage regulation, and then you have some other additional power management for your RAM and the rest of the control functions on the board there. Right here on your PCH you have a decent cooler. It's got some interesting design to it which gives it a nice look and will definitely tell you if this is an effective cooler or not. I know on the Gene for the uh, Max, uh, Maximus line we didn't see it as being that effective. It was a little bit better than some of the other ones we've seen but not as effective as we would have liked it to be. Of course you have your PCIe X16 slots. The top one is going to be PCIe Generation 3. And we can flip it over to the back and see that you do have two full X16 slots as far as their electrical connections and one X8. These two X16s, um, they should operate in X16 mode, although you're only going to get one slot that's going to operate in generation uh, three from our understanding. So, and we'll follow up with that and we'll give you more information on that once we get into the meat of the performance of the board. You also have an X4 slot here, which is kind of nice. It has an open-ended back, so you could put something in there that's a longer card, as long as it's capable of running at X4 only. Uh, there are a few cards that will actually let you do that. Again, looking at the rest of the board here, you can see that ASUS has uh, maintained its commitment to have at least four 4-pin uh, four PWM fan headers. You have one. You have two. This is the second one here. You have three up here, four, and you actually have five on this board. So you've got more than four, which is a, a really nice feature to know that you have those fan headers. And again, that goes with a lot of their controls that allow you to control that. All right, taking a look at the bottom of the board here, you see that they have their nice uh, controls. You also have your go button. And you have your, uh, you know, spit if out. You have a couple of other uh, USB port headers down here. You have a SATA port here. This is usually used for eSATA functions. So if you have a case with an eSATA, header on the front, you know, for front panel controls, that's what you're going to use that for. You have your Supreme FX3 chip here with something of an EMI shield over top of it. And of course, as we've talked about on all of their newer Republic of Gamers lines, you have this separation. So it's going to keep this, all of the audio f controls are actually going to be separated from the PCB. They're actually broken out and there is an LED in here to show you that physical separation in the board. You can actually see this even on the back. They've gone ahead and they've separated the entire audio control out from the rest of the PCB. There's a single connection through, obviously, because it does have to work in conjunction with the board. But for the most part, it's almost entirely segregated from the rest of the board. It's going to lower your feedback or any other kind of electrical interference with the audio and should give you better audio performance. All right, of course, you have uh, six SATA ports here. You're going to have two that are going to be SATA 3 and the other four are going to be SATA 2. And we'll flip around to take a look at the I.O. panel here. You have some USB 2.0 ports. This white one down here at the bottom, that's going to be your ROG Connect. The other ones are actually just going to be your typical stuff. You have a BIOS flash. You have your uh, SPDIF optical out. 
and you have two USB 3.0 headers, an eSATA port on the back, and of course your Intel LAN, and then your fairly typical audio out there. This PS2 port is actually pretty nice. It's a dual function port. It'll do both uh, my, you know, my sore keyboard, so it's got the right power there. One of the things that we've seen is in a lot of cases when you start pushing the boards and you start overclocking them, the USB function will actually can stop. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you still have a keyboard or a mouse that's plugged into this PS2 port and you should be, you should be fine. All right, that covers pretty much everything that we've got as far as the design and layout of the board. And we'll go ahead and get, the pro get this board put up on our bench and show you how the performance is. As always, if you like this video, be sure to click on the like button, share it with your friends, and be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.